Yo, what's up, dudes? What's up? Uh, well, I had to come back on and show you this. I've been on a little while for a dedicated video. And uh, I uh, wanted to come on and show you this. This was listed. I bought this used off Guitar Center for uh, 350 bucks, And it uh, was listed as an Ibanez RG560, which it is, in 5 Alarm Red, which it isn't. And as a matter of fact, this isn't even like... Uh, it is an RG560, but it, it's a parts caster. From It's from two different years. So the neck on this has the badge on the back. That would place it at uh, 1987 production, 1988 retail. Uh, the body is a Gen 2, which you can tell because the knob is uh, a little farther away from the pickup. It's like twice the distance than the Gen 1. Uh, five alarm red was only available as a color on Gen One. Period. They never made it, and uh, it was never available retail in ninety or ninety one uh, or ninety two. Uh, the guitars were available eighty eight, eighty nine, ninety, ninety one, ninety two. They went from first gen, which was eighty eight and eighty nine, to second gen, in uh, for pretty much uh, ninety, ninety one, and ninety two. Again, all those would have been produced and had serial numbers from the prior year. So if you have a, so if you think about it, <clears throat> people complain they didn't like the knob so close to the pickup. But the guitars were out in the year of 1988, so they say, okay, well, let's set it for the next production run. But they're already in their production run for 89. So the next production run is 89, and so the Gen 2 was 1990. Pretty much. You know, retail, but it was made in 89. Uh, they were, they've always been like that. I don't know why, but it's like they seem to make their guitars a year prior. Uh, this is not Five Alarm Red. This is, um, I don't know, Home Depot Krylon Orange. <laughs> I don't know, metallic. I don't know what this is. Uh, you can see he, he got a little drippy with it, and the uh, paint job is so bad. Let me see if I can... You see the... The orange peeling on that. Let me see if I can tilt this just the right way. It's got to be a way, like right there, now right there. Yeah, you see the orange peeling on it? Whoever did this, don't quit your day job. Unless your day job is painting, then then quit it, please. Because this is terrible. You know, uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you points for effort. But the re, you know the result is 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 pretty bad. Um, I I knew this is what this was going to be. Okay, so I looked up online, uh, saw the guitar, bought it instantly. That was like on a Monday. Wednesday comes and you know they haven't shipped it yet. But I'm like doing a bunch of research trying to find. An RG560 and 5 Alarm Red, which is really hard to do. The only places I could really find it were on the wiki. So I look, um, you know, around and I do a big search. And finally, I come across a Facebook listing. I was like, oh, my God, that looks like the guitar I just bought. Mainly because of this. The discoloration on the back of the neck. This probably had some, it, it could have had a neck snap. But it's just been deep cracks. These crack around here because they're so damn thin, right? I mean, look at the thinness of that neck. Neck is so thin. And then you drill two holes through it right there. It, it tends to lead to cracking. Yeah, it's pretty common. Um, that doesn't actually bother me uh, too much, but I could see the from the discoloration, it leaves a certain fingerprint. That other guitar had the same fingerprint. Oh, my God, there's the guitar. Um it doesn't have the original pickups. According to the ad, which was in North Carolina, you want to take a guess the state where I bought this out of for, uh, you know, off of Guitar Center used? Anyone? North Carolina. <laughs> so this guy gave up. He had it listed for 500 but 
He probably sold it to Guitar Center for two fifty, and they sold it to me for three fifty. That's a um, Demarzio um, a tone zone in parallel. He wired it in parallel for some reason. Uh, it sounds good, but I probably would have gone series. Um, that's a, an Area sixty seven humbucker. And that's a an injector uh, humbucker uh, for the neck. Uh, all DiMarzio. And they sound great. You know, you know it's, got a, it's got a pretty decent... There you can hear the, the parallel. Because it's, it's just a little bright. And then when you go to mode two, he's out of phase. Again, don't quit your day job and unless your day job is wiring guitars. He's out of phase and uh, he'll probably say he meant that, but there's the middle. Great sound to pick up. Uh, and then here's the front two. And then just the front. It, it's a great sounding guitar, quite frankly. Um, and I think it owes almost all of it to the pickups. Uh, but I don't think I can live with that paint job. You know? It's just too amateurish. Uh, and if you want to see the real color, it's right there. See it? It's, um, it's lipstick red, which was still available in, uh, in uh, 1990 and uh, 91 and 92. This is definitely second-gen body, without a doubt. But definitely first-gen neck. Uh, the first year... They didn't have the silk screen ready to do the back of the neck, so they just printed out stickers and slapped them on the back. Um, that is authentic. That is definitely an 87 build, 88 sale, first gen, first year neck. I remember when we got these in, uh, I was at the store. We had just put a big order in a couple of weeks earlier. They were finally there. The rep had been coming in all year talking about the... Um, talking about the... Uh, <clears throat> the gem... And how they had signed Steve Vai and all this stuff. But they were producing. Right before the NAM show, he came in and showed off. Or right around the NAM show, the rep came in and was like, these are the new things for 1988. And it was this. little That little badge right on the back. The RG560 and the RG550. Um, <clears throat> I remember we, we had the, the Violet Pearl one in Rosewood fingerboard which i took home that day still have it i scalloped it of course that's what kids do uh but uh, uh i also had a white one with the maple fingerboard uh, i still know the guy who owns that i should get him over here sometime and uh i had the 550 in um like the 1990 that's when they went to the matching headstock first two years the headstock's black so this guy has a problem right he's got a second gen body he wants to make it uh, five alarm red, but it's going to have a matching headstock. And uh, anyone who knows anything about Ibanez says, well, that's a parts caster right there. Uh, so he had to, he had to go with the, with the black because <laughs> they never made five alarm red. He's never going to, you know, I mean, I guess if he's faking the body, why not just throw a, you know, a fake spray for the headstock. But if you're doing five alarm red, it was a black headstock. Never had a matching headstock for that color. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I think it's going back. I think I'm 90% in the camp. It's going back. Uh, the paint job is just too gross. And I have a bunch of RG560s. You know, I I wanted one in five alarm red, which is much more orange than this. Way, way more orange. And we had one in. I remember getting one in. And I'm just so bummed I didn't take that one home. We might have even had one in with a maple fingerboard at one point. They only, they came through like one-offs, right? You never saw them again. 
they went kind of all rosewood at, at one point. They they wouldn't do the maple anymore. Those first two years, you could get either one, but it was very maple heavy, and just what we would order and get in. And uh, the RG five fifty took up the you know the 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 maple fingerboards, and then I want to say the next year, it might have been eighty nine that the seven sixty came out and the five. The 570 might have come out that year too, you know, or maybe the year after that. I know this. We had Paul Gilbert come in in um, the summer of 89, right? It's like late June of 89. And uh, Gilbert comes in to do a clinic, and we put all the Ibanez gear behind him. And if I look at all those headstocks, there's not a single one with a matching headstock, right? That's the summer of 89. So I don't think you're getting matching headstocks until the summer of 1990, which would have been an 89 build. That sounds about right, if I remember correctly. So what do you think on this? Yay or nay? I'm in a I'm pretty, I'm like 99% in the nay. I mean, look at that drip. Look at, see this? Look at that thing. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice work there, hot shot. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, part of me is if it plays good and it sounds good, which it kind of does, you know, is, is that, am I that superficial? I, I might be. <laughs> I wish you just left the old one. Because uh, you could do Lipstick Red with a black headstock. They did that for the first two years. Uh, lipstick Red was around for, like, I think, four years. So, you know, you can definitely, you know, you can definitely get them out there. He wanted fire five alarm red. He got, I don't know, aisle aisle twelve red <laughs> from from the Home Depot. A couple of Krylon cans. All right, dudes. Let me know what you think. Send it back. I think it's going back. What would you do? Let me know in the comments. Great to see you as always. Thanks for hanging out. Rock on.